go ahead, Mysoslav. Dear professors and audience, I take the thank you for invitation and I take the opportunity to introduce my research about the physical basis of, of economics. And of course, it is a continuation of the former presentation. I prepared some, some page about the thermodynamics of integration, but I do not have time to speak about this. So uh, my research concerns about system of the go money goods economy, why fully respect physical, physical concepts and laws, and the two part prehistoric time and present time. Uh, excuse me. Um, in the history of economic thought, disputes about uh, the emergence of early economic system are well known. Uh, Professor Carpolani and others. But I would like to draw your attention to an important fact indicating the existence of an economic system earlier than previously thought. And it is related to the particular token representing labor union. This uh, token, uh, second from the left, the tetrahedron stood for a unit of labor. And uh, uh, this picture is captured in Danish man Besserat, professor at University of Texas in Austin. And uh, Professor Dennis Schmandbesser discovered tokens, small pay counters, and recognized that they create accounting system widely used in the New East from 8,000 BC to 3,000. And it existed for five millennia, according to the opinion of Professor Matez. The shades were different, but please put your attention again to the to, to this uh, pyramid, and it is interpreted. Uh, Professor Denis Matbeserat uh, interpreted it is as a personal day of work, but in her book. In her book, there is, there is, there is set of such a, a labor units, and this is almost 10 different, uh, not the shapes, the shapes is always pyramids, but they have some additional marks. This means that they, that they apply many different sets of labor units, but uh, from the third millennium, the clay tables with economic text appeared, and Professor Struve, with, with the famous paper, Some New Data of Organization of Labor and Social Structure in Summer, in Summer during the reign of the third dynasty, this is the third millennium found that uh, they uh, apply the fundamental uh, unit uh, Monday and they used uh, some fraction to, co to modify the value of unit of labor. So the laborer whose productivity of labor was estimated at, each, at the use of this fraction received the grain ratio proportionally reduced. So there is question, are we not seeing here a natural formula measure of for measure of measurement of work as the product of power and the time of work? And value of work is equal worker productivity times time time of labor. And this is the value, fair value of compensation. So token, tokens are not only the beginning of writing and counting, but also, but also a proof of the existence coherent economic system driven 
by a label. And uh, uh, in fact, in the present time, system is similar. How you work, in a return we receive a record of the amount due for work and the bank on the bank account and then we exchange our receivables for the necessary products. So the work creates our money and this is the basic physical fact in economics. Let us move to the present time. Uh, I, remind, I remind you that Capital is the abstract category, the potential ability of object to perform work. But work, work and capital, they are complementary notions. Capital is potential ability, but work is the transfer. So this, this is dynamic transfer of the capital from initial, initial place to the to the object, but work also create the work, uh, the work receivable. This is only a record. So money, this means the work receivable are economic and the legal category specifying, specifying the unconditional right to receive the value equivalent. Oh, excuse me. On, on, the, on, the basic, on the basis of this knowledge, how an organization of the bank system in the money goods economy driven by labor should apply? Looks like you have such a subject like household, private sector, public sector, and set of the commercial banks who will pay for the labor made in the public sector. What an institution. Oh, the natural solution is that the reformed central bank. So the, the central banks should transfer payment to the account of the employees of public sector. This is the significant change. The equation of exchange. The essence of money goods economy is the exchange of amount due for work, work receivable for products and services. The labor launch, launches two streams, as we know, products and money. These streams are constantly confronted. And we hear schemes which try to, to give the, some good picture of these two streams. On the bottom box, we have human resources with the human capital. And the left stream rep represents the stream of products. Here, cost of labor, this means total compensation. Join with asset by the product manufacturing function. And here appears the, the mentioned already uh, labor productivity coefficient. And uh, this product uh, flow to the market and the yearly amount, this is GDP. The second stream the same, uh, has the same source. This is still the work receivable, so this is stream of money. And this stream is split into two substreams. The first uh, with the um, determined by the, by the um, number A, less than one and positive uh, represent the people who, poor people who does not create savings. So the second substream goes through the 
uh, uh, system of commercial banks and uh, he, there appears a uh, factor variable k which we want to compute because it is irresponsible for the total credit. And then this, uh, this, po uh, this joint stream go to the market exchange uh, and it is, it is the basis for formulation of the pay equation of exchange. So here GDP uh, developed to the G real GDP times inflation deflation index is the sum of these uh, streams and uh, of course it is assumed that this i should be equal to zero uh, because we want to have the stable money units and then we have such a shape of the of the of this equation and uh, then we divide it by the w cost of labor and you have the equation for the labor productivity and we and it is sufficient in to in order to compute the coefficient k this variable k so k is equal such a formula and we see that if all people are poor and don't create uh, savings deposits so because a is a then a is equal to one so the rival k is undefined so we compute total credit and this is this formula and uh, total money and uh, labor, real labor productivity um, decline by a, a and d where d is the balance of savings but this um, amount of credit must be granted if economic money goes economic uh, should work. Uh, this work productivity index is the fundamental control factor. It is the same quotient and uh, we hear much from Martin. So I only put your attention that from this formula implies that if Q does not decrease, so inflation does not increase. So this is, it is sufficient to keep eye on, on that the, the Q cannot decrease. And uh, according to a study and issues, the Q is a function of important economic indicators such as Based technical equipment work, asset profitability, and operational efficiency. Ending notes. Labor is self financing. Labor creates money. Deflation in developed economies is caused by financing the public sector work by taxes, which disturbs nat natural confrontation of streams. The contemporary central bank can do nothing for good of economy, but it has tool for destroy it. The future central bank will be, will be a payer of compensation for the public sector under control of labor productivity in the school. Scientific economics is consistent with the concept of physics and is self-regulating. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. I think we'll now open it up to questions and there are some here on order. So if 
Harold is on, then perhaps if he can ask, and then we'll go to Lib and Mark Sandoval in that order. Go ahead. Yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, part of this conversation has been unfolding in the group chat. Um, so what I don't understand is I was fine with the sort of the, the, the beginning of this session where capital was basically um, defined as, you know, the availability to do work. Uh, it was in, defined in biophysical terms. Um, I have no problem with that. Um, so obviously energy flows in our economy and we use that energy to produce things. That, that's not the issue. My issue was that then somehow we went to measuring capital, not with biophysical natural units like jewels and things like that, but with monetary units, um, or at least that's the way it seemed to me because we started talking about wages and fair remuneration uh, and profits and, and things like that. Um, now the problem is that uh, when you measure, you know, you want to say that capital is productive and so it helps explain profits because it's productive. But the problem is when you measure capital goods with money, when you value them with money, that valuation will depend on the profit rates and the, uh, and the income distribution of the firm. So I gave an example uh, in the chat where suppose you're an oil company uh, and you have a bunch of oil tankers. Um, now oil prices go up and so profits go up. And so the oil tankers, the sale price of the oil tankers goes up. In this case, what's happening is the profit rate that's explaining the valuation of the oil tankers. It's not the valuation of the oil tankers that's explaining the profit. So you have this circularity and this was all discussed in the Cambridge capital controversy 50 years ago, um, uh, more than that. Uh, so you have this circularity when you value capital goods using money. Um, and, and so that, that's kind of the, the, the disconnect. If, if you uh, value capital with monetary units, you're not explaining profits or any of these things. It's just, it's just circular. It's uh, because these things depend on profit rates and, and, all of, uh, and, and income distribution and, and remuneration, and as you call it, and things like that. Um, so that's... They have yeah. a, a question to try to see if they can answer. I'm not sure how they're going to respond to this. I'm not sure how mm -hmm. they, or is it just a comment? Or? Uh, for me, are you calling on me? Oh, I'm asking Harold. Uh, if there's, oh, okay. I'm having a, if, if there's a. But then can I go? Question. Oh, no, then we have Lib and then Mark and then Charlie. Okay. So may I answer for the first question? Go ahead. As was mentioned five ages ago in this book about double entry accounting, we have the fundamental identity. And it simply stems from, uh, from this identity that the capital is abstract. And the rest of notion, fundamental notion, economic notion, are also abstract. There is nothing like capital goods. Of course, I know that it is commonly used in the economy. But these three presentations keep this uh, keep this statement that we have abstract notions and even the assets, of course, assets are heterogenic and so on, but we, we use the value of assets and this is also abstract categories. So, to understand this all, we do not have Material, man, money is not material, it's also abstract. This is simply work receivable and uh, closely related to the labor which produces work receivable. And the exchange is between, between this work receivable and, and the value of product and services. And 
and uh, what uh, what I can add is that this all is the consistent system of thinking about economics and as you could see uh, on this uh, computation of human capital and fair compensation and as you can see here this uh, such an economic system can work without any problem but if you do not if you take uh, by taxes from the right stream stream of money by by direct direct tax some amount in in order to finance labor in the public sector so the bank has to print money and uh, according to my computation f either should print 75 billions of dollars per month for such a some maybe not equilibrium but the consistency between the streams streams of product and stream of money and this is my maybe very rough explanation but I underline again stress again that it is full consistent because we do not admit the uh, do not admit uh, some material concept of money or capital and so, uh, and so on these are abstract concepts uh, and uh, uh, in the last statement and can, can say because the, I saw the such a question that uh, in economics ability of doing work is called capital and the, the same ability of doing work in natural science is called energy of course this is such a great concept that as you could see here we could we could speak about the some constants from economic point of view thank you very much okay i think we're going to go maybe i don't know five or ten minutes max because there's a session i guess a planning session and uh, in 15 minutes, so attempt to ask a question uh, quickly so we can get through three of these. So, Lib, if you have anything to add on top of it. Uh, yeah, my, my, my question is, uh, who is the uh, inspiration behind your group in, in Poland there, historically speaking? Is there a scholar that gave you the idea to begin to apply thermodynamics to economically? Now, do you mean the scalar, is this scalar value? No, just was there, was there someone that gave you the, what gave you your group the idea to begin applying thermodynamics to economics? Well, it's, it's, it's all Professor Dovia idea. So we are just continuing the, the, the idea. Okay. We're hearing it from the originator's mouth. Okay, good. Um, Mark Sandoval, question? Yes, only, only one to, to ask to the, to the professor, I can't pronounce your name, sorry, Marcin. When, when you use the, the, the term fur, uh, what do you mean? Because if you said fur, when you try to say survive, it's different if you want to say fair because the economy uh, has the leverage for that you know there's only one to understand exactly the the meaning for the fair 
that you use. Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, thank you. I, I know that you're talking to me, Martin Jędrzejczyk. Uh, yes, um, a fair uh, concept in economics and in Martin, we just lost you if you're in the same. So we have an extra question. So I'm just yes, confirming. I can hear you now. Okay, Martin, I, I can hear you. Uh, Go ahead with your previous uh, answer. Well, yes, yes, uh, your, I was, uh, your sound is a bit poor. Um, given the internet connection, it might be a good idea to uh, for the speakers to receive the questions by email and answer Kerry. accordingly. Um, Come on, Kerry, give me one minute. All right. Well, I'm not sure anyone we can hear anyone on the other end is the problem. Well, to wh whoever can hear me. I'd just like to say that we've been wrestling with these ideas in what we call biophysical economics. We have an international society of biophysical economics. We have a journal. So if uh, we've been doing this for a long time, I believe we have integrated the natural sciences and thermodynamics and economics much more explicitly than I've been hearing at this meeting. Uh, but I might be biased. So thank you everyone for, for joining the session. Uh, I think it was quite enlightening. So. Well, thank you, Dr. Kerry, for hosting the, um, the session. Uh, I'd like to request all participants to slowly start making their way to the uh, general meeting. The link is in the chat room. Um, um, if there are any more questions to our Polish presenters, I'd recommend sending it via email and they will respond accordingly.